What's going on fam? Long time no see. Guys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you guys so much for joining me. For those of you who don't know, my name is Samson and in today's video, we are finally getting down to the Stroker build on the BQ35DE engine. I have the engine right here, I have the crankshaft, the pistons, all the different things I need to go ahead and assemble this. Big shout out to Hauser Automotive Machine in Garner, North Carolina, and also a big shout out to Moffitt Machine as well. Uh, Hauser did the uh, machining on my actual block in order to put in the Darton sleeves. The sleeves were actually fairly unique, so it's really difficult to find somebody to put them in. And Moffitt also did some of the work on my crankshaft as well as on my heads because I do have uh, oversized valves for the heads as well. So in today's video, guys, we're gonna go ahead, get started on this engine. Uh, and uh, let's get to it. Uh, first and foremost, I do want to let you guys know that this has been thoroughly cleaned. Um, I believe I have gone in and actually uh, wiped through it multiple times. I washed it with a little bit of soapy water, some uh, brake clean, and I do have my air compressor right there. So we did go in, make sure that this block was as clean as we can get. And whenever we actually go in and uh, put the pistons in, we're gonna go in and wipe the cylinders one more time. But just like that, first thing we're gonna install are the actual oil squirters. And so uh, with the DE engine, you do have three oil squirters and they fit down right in the middle of the block. Now I am going to actually put a little bit of a thread locker on mine just because I do not want them backing their way out. So for our next bit of action, since we now have the uh, oil squirters in, and we already do have, I did do, do these a while back, we already do have all of our studs in to be able to fit our main caps on. So since we got oil squirters in, we got our studs in, we're gonna go ahead and install the bearings. Now for my bearing setup, I did go with ACL. Um, it seems to be, it seems to be relatively, uh, for the most part, from what I can tell, a lot of people seem to use these ACL bearings. Now, I know that you had a whole bunch of other options to go with, like Kings, but I decided to go with these ACLs. And so I'm just gonna make sure that I wipe them off one time really good uh, before I go ahead and install them. Because what you don't want, and let me wipe this bottom part off too, you don't want any type of oil or grease on the back side of this. Uh, that way that you prevent the likelihood of actually spinning a bearing. And so you want it to be as metal on metal as you can get it on the back side. And for these VQ35DEs, one set is gonna have a little bit of a groove in it. The other set is gonna just be flat. The set with the groove is the set that goes in the actual block. you want to make sure that you do is put your thrust washers in and so 
The bottom set of thrust washers are gonna be a little bit different from the top set that goes into the main caps. The bottom set is gonna have this little lip on the edge right here. And you'll be able to tell which way they go in uh, on the actual block. It's only one way that they can go. For your main cap set, there is a wrong way to put them on, but I'll show you guys how to put them on. Uh, but this right here keeps your crank from doing too much shifting forward and backwards. And so you definitely do not want to uh, miss putting these in. Make sure that you guys do that. We're going to do the same process, clean them real quick. Only difficult part about these is that since they only sit on the side, they are a li little difficult to uh, make sure that they stay on. However, um, we will do our best. Crankshaft in, just gonna put a little bit of assembly lube, just a little smidge on each of these uh, bearings. And some people like to leave it, me personally, I like to at least rub mine on just a little bit to make sure that I coat all of it. And basically, this lube is up here just so that whenever you do start turning your crankshaft, you don't have a whole lot of metal on metal contact. This right here is gonna sort of act as your oil, at least until you actually get your, uh, until you actually get your oil in here and get everything running. And I'll add a little smidge to the crankshaft journals as well. And so now uh, we are gonna go ahead and drop our crank in. Now it's gonna be a little difficult because we do have those uh, thrust washers on the side um, and so sometimes you might end up having an, a bit of an issue where you go to try to drop it in and uh, you end up not getting it in just right enough so you hit one of the thrust washers so we're going to try to avoid that I can't make any promises but uh, let's see how we do it. And just so you guys know, this crankshaft has also already been cleaned. All the journals have been wiped down. Let's try to drop this in without messing up those thrust washers. Of all guys, my phone cut out literally as I got the crankshaft in. However, uh, like I was saying, uh, you guys didn't hear me, but like I was saying is that the crankshaft is in. I'm just going in with this screwdriver, making sure that those thrust washers are still seated. And so the next step is gonna to be to go ahead and put in the uh, main caps and the bearings that go with the main caps. Now, these main caps are numbered on the main cap. I'm not sure if you guys can see, but there is a number four right here, and they're also directional. So the arrow is pointing towards the front of the engine, which means in this particular scenario, I know that you guys are a little bit different setup, but this one is gonna go in the back, but it's also gonna be pointing this way. Um, but before we do that, let's go ahead, put a little bit of uh, lube on these journals and actually wipe down these bearings. Uh, Cause like I mentioned, you don't want anything spinning when it's not supposed to. And then uh, after we get these bearings wiped down, we'll go ahead and put these in the main caps and uh, keep on rolling. Alright guys, now as we move 
to the third and final main cap. One thing that I do wanna let you guys know, and I did already go in and clean these. Like I mentioned earlier, just like how you have thrust washers on the bottom, you also have these thrust washers on the top. Now, mine have already been cleaned and uh, should be good to go. However, what you do wanna do is, well, actually, let me go ahead and get this bearing in real quick first. What you do wanna do is make sure that the groove that you see on your thrust washers is actually facing outward. Now on the actual uh, thrust washer bearings that are on the bottom, they also have a groove, but in their groove on the bottom, it's also facing outward, but they also have a lip on them. For these, they don't have a lip on the end. So they do have one side that is grooved the other side is not grooved. Those grooves are there in order to let a little bit of oil get in there and lubricate it as it's turning in the crankshaft. And so you do want to go in and put a little bit of assembly lube on that journal. You do want to go in, make sure that you have those thrust washers in and make sure that the groove is facing outward on both of them. You guys can see how they go in just like that. Now it is gonna be a little bit difficult to put them in. So we might have to go at it more than one attempt just because of the nature of how this is made. However, hopefully this is, we'll see. Okay, I think we should be good to go that's not moving all right and so the last thing we have to do in order to have this crankshaft installed final is to put our girdle on all right guys now that we got our main caps on like i mentioned we are going to install the girdle now it is the wrong way to install this you can see it does have a one written right here on the top of the girdle so that you do know that this is going to go over that first main cap going through and checking one time we do have one, two, three, four, just like it should be. We do have our thrust washers in. Everything should be good to go. Let's go ahead and put this on. Now, it may be a little bit difficult to put on. It never wants to go down totally smoothly. However, I do have a rubber mallet that, I do have a rubber mallet that should go ahead, make it so. This does go down just a little bit easier. And then next up, we are going to install our uh, actual uh, bolts for these studs. And just so everything is clean, I'm going to wipe each of them down uh, just a little bit before I actually put them on. <laughs> simply just went on ahead and turned them just to the point where uh, I don't have to turn them on completely by hand and I can just torque them down with the torque wrench. And so now these main cap bolts are going to actually get torqued down to between 24 and 28 foot pounds plus a 90 to 95 degree turn. 
And so let's go ahead and get everything set up to go ahead and torque these down. All right guys, and so I do have my digital uh, calibrator right here for my torque sets. We are going to 24 to 28 foot pounds on each of these. And there is a specific torque sequence that these need to be in. And so uh, I will show you guys that as I torque them down. So now that we have everything torqued down, last step to have this thing fully installed is to go ahead and do a 90 degree turn. Now, first and foremost, let me say, I definitely recommend getting you an electric, uh, not electric, an electronic uh, torque wrench if you can. They are a little bit pricey, but I think it will definitely beat having to sit there and look at it every single time. It'll just beat whenever you actually get it to the torque spec that you're uh, supposed to. And so just like that, let's go ahead and uh, let's do our best to turn these 90 degrees. Now it's gonna be the same sequence. What a lot of people do is they go in, put a little bit of, uh, whether it's paint or something up there, just to make it a little bit easier to see. I am just gonna go off of just the angle of the actual uh, wrench itself. 90 degrees shouldn't be too, too difficult to do and to actually measure by eye. And so. All right, and just like that guys, the crankshaft is fully installed. You have no play forward and backward. Um, I do have my crank bolt in, so I can actually show you guys what it looks like whenever it turns. And it is a clockwise engine. So I gotta put this crank bolt in a little bit and then eventually when the crank bolt gets tight enough, there we go, it'll start turning. And just like that, guys, nice, smooth. You guys can see, lovely. Not having no issues with the bearings. Everything appears to be staying where it should be. And so just like that, you have your crankshaft installed. In the next video, we will go ahead and get to installing the uh, actual uh, rods and pistons. But just like that, touch you guys up real quick. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. Uh, and like I said, we'll get to the rods and pistons in another video. I do need to go in and actually clean, make sure I got everything with those rods and pistons clean. Um, everything with this block should be good to go though. But just like that guys, thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you guys like to see in these other videos. And uh, if you guys actually enjoy the engine building content just like that, I'll catch y'all in the next one. Peace.